to dethrone misery and sadness. First of all, what do we mean by dethrone? For many of us, the thing that's causing unhappiness or difficulty in our life, actually for all of us, is our own mind, our own limited thoughts, and the emotions associated with those that we have built up over a long period. And the amalgamation of these Is what's actually driving our lives and making us feel confused. So what you really are is the king or queen, the pure existence, the pure being. But instead of you sitting on the throne of your life, It could be that limited mind, which Ramana Maharshi called the I thought or the ego, is sitting on the throne, telling you what to do and what not to do. And at the same time, telling you that you and others are no good. Now this I thought, through commenting and picking up concepts about your experiences, has built up a sizable amount of thoughts about you and others, and uncomfortable emotions about your situation and others. And when you believe in those, and this habit of believing in them has been there for a long time, so it's not easy to see through at first. But when you believe in those ideas, that amalgamation of the I thought and all of your thoughts and emotions, including misery and sadness, and unhappiness, confusion, that entire ball of confusion is sitting on the throne of your life and is the king or queen of your life. And this is the state of mostly unhappiness or only temporary happiness in between some unhappiness, some happiness, but nothing permanent, and there's no restfulness, there's no resolution, there's no freedom, and this is the state many of us might find ourselves in at some point in our life. It's also possible that you like this group of emotions and you're enjoying feeling that way but that will not last for very long because the real you remains ever present. The real you, which is just this pure awareness that's simply aware, being, that's able to perceive but isn't touched by anything it's perceiving. That real source what you are all you need to do is look you 
just see your experience without looking at your thoughts and emotions momentarily. And just feel the fact that, that you're aware, you're existing here. And whatever arises and comments something out to confuse you from this simple fact that you're just being is another thought arising, it's another part of your mind, or the I thought, the thought that I am a separate individual, and I know what I'm doing, or I don't know what I'm doing. So how to dethrone this suffocating sense of misery, sadness, or confusion, unhappiness, whatever it might be that you're experiencing or have experienced at some point, is to question that one that's sitting in the throne. So look in your experience now. What is the ruler of your experience? For most of us, you ask, if you ask that question, the only response is I. This is cutting to the chase as quick as possible. This is the quickest way to recognize what you are and who you are. You are, and that is as it is, perfect. But when you go into this separate identification with thoughts and emotions that pile up on top of you, and you think that that is true, and that's the only truth, and that it's not going to give you, or it's going to cover over your innate happiness that you already have. So who is it that's willing? The I that arises is only a thought. It's a very powerful one. The thing is, is that most people don't ever get to this I because they're busy looking at everything outside of themselves to explain their existence. You're looking at people around you, looking at objects in the world, looking at your goals and the way other people see your goals. Have you met them? Have you not met them? Are you productive enough? Have you failed? Are you worthy of what you have? All of these kind of things. And those are all absolutely fine, but that's not what you are. That has to be very clear. So. Most of us are spending our time completely on those things, trying to find what we are in those things. But what you are is simply what you are now, without trying to be anything, simply just being. So that I that arises, just notice that you are aware of even that arising. Notice that any emotion that arises, whether it's feeling misery, feeling sadness, feeling depressed, it's taking place within your awareness, your field of awareness. And your field of awareness, your feeling of being was there first, before this emotion. In the same way that the ocean is there as a source and before the waves. 
So when the I thought plus our emotions and thoughts are sitting on the throne, we're not able to see the I thought. We're not able to see that the simple thought identifying with those is the causing the problem. So first just we feel the emotions, feel go into a feeling of just being, allowing them to be there. And normally we would say, I'm having this experience. This is because of this, this is because of that, and the thoughts start to run to explain it away. But here we're going to say, who is it? Who is having these experiences? I am. So immediately our awareness comes back to just a feeling of being. I'm having this experience. That's a, that itself is a revelation. And what is aware to what is just being here that's aware of that? If you just rest in that feeling, notice that there's a natural awareness that's aware of both the emotions and the thoughts and also the feeling of being an individual, which also arises as a wave. And that's why Ramana Maharshi refers to it as ahamvritti. It's a wave, it's like a thought arising. And it was not there in deep sleep. Yet you continue to exist. The peace of deep sleep is here now, in the form of awareness. This natural awareness is always here, quietly, just being as it is. And it's there when an emotion arises, it's there when an emotion subsides. And it always does subside. If you're looking for it, if you're feeling it. So recognizing this freedom of just being the pure awareness is the key to dethroning this imposter, the mind that says, I experienced this, this, and they did this to me, or she or he did this to me. It's because of them. If you look at any great persona, any great personality throughout history, one of the things in common with all of them is that they took up the responsibility for their own life and some and often for many other people not trying to blame on circumstances but they had the ability to see if there was something wrong in the circumstance and take action on it that action requires awareness So in case you might wonder, recognizing the pure being and the pure awareness, does that make me a passive a person who doesn't do anything? And will I become like a vegetable? No. It's in fact the awareness that allows for existing and action and being. You have to have some level of peace to be able to act. Yes, you do. You need some level of awareness to be able to get up and act. Without that, you're frozen. So, in, you know, in Bhagavad Gita, for example, Arjuna could not fight the battle. He was overcome with emotions to the point that he could not take action. And only after Krishna talks to him, he gets some semblance of peace and is able to do what he was going to do. So this discovery that lets you become free of your emotions, free of your thoughts, free of your identification, and permanently free 
and a peace that's beyond what we think of as peaceful. It's a resolution of who we are, so that the identity crisis of what we are, am I this ethnicity, am I that, am I all of these different things get resolved because you realize that you are something that's beyond all of that. That's the real depth of what you are. And all of the other layers that you see above that or on the surface of that are still okay. They're beautiful. Nothing wrong with it. But that's not the final say of what you are, if that makes sense. So when you realize the depths, the freedom and of what you are, everything has a context. The context of everything is this innate natural being and perfection which permeates everything. And that allows you to get up and act if you need to. It allows you to take, um, make changes as necessary. It also allows you to not try to do everything with the same approach. So if a change does not need to be made, that natural awareness is able to see that. There isn't one set strategy for everything. And only with your own natural awareness can you see it. Without recognizing your awareness, you're just a bundle of thoughts and emotions playing themselves out over and over and over again in habits. Those are all limiting you greatly. So again, how to take back your power as the king or queen or whatever you'd like to term you'd like to use, master or, you know, just a happy person, <laughs> whatever you like to say, however you like to call it, how to take back your heritage of being is to simply look at your experience without thoughts, without the emotions as the driving force and recognize what is the source of those. It's extremely simple, extremely easy, and anyone can do it in a snap. Why some people find it difficult, or why is there the feeling of difficulty that may arise? It's simply facing the emotions and the thoughts and the patterns that you've had in the past that you've been hiding, covering over, trying to avoid. And this very avoidance comes from the I thought that wants to remain on the throne. So it will tell you and compel you to do things so that it will continue to seemingly run the show, which it never did and never can. It's the same way, it's like saying that a character in a movie on a TV screen can control whether the TV is on or off and in what manner the colors of the movie are being played. This is how silly it would be. Or, for example, a wave in the ocean controlling the ocean. The real you is the ocean or the screen of the TV. And this I that's pretending to sit on the throne is like a, a little character in a movie on the TV screen, or a wave, a singular drop or a wave in the ocean. And recognizing what you are, this individual aspect of you is also okay, but you just find that that's not the limit of what you are. And this completely frees you from misery, feeling of deep sadness. It's not that you'll never experience sadness, but you will not be confused by it, and you will not be caught by it. You will not be stuck in it. In fact, you're, you welcome it, just like anything else. It's only the I thought that wants to push everything away and cling to only a limited 
difficult identity, if that makes sense. But you may think, oh, I don't want to have these bad feelings. But part of you does, because it makes you feel like you're a limited person, like it makes you exist. Something beyond that, just a pure feeling of being, much more powerful and much more peaceful and enjoyable. So I wish you freedom from any sadness, difficulties that you might be having. And I hope you will use this approach to completely free yourself from identification and confusion with arising emotions and thoughts. And this lets you go on with your life and really live your life, not in a passive way, but in peace and freedom. <laughs>